Hello world, this is Edward Bevilacqua with Chow Tutti and the Italian American Club and I have the great uh, privilege, honor, what would you say, to be here with you? It just likes to be uh, talking to you. That's okay. Right. Yeah. okay, it's uh, good to be talking to you. You know, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're Las Vegans and we love this town of Las Vegas. I've been here 34 years now. From? Well, I was on the road prior to that. I grew up in Philadelphia, but at 21, I went over the road, and I traveled all around the country and the world. Did three years in San Juan, Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico in 81, Siegfried from Siegfried and Roy discovered my act and invited me to Vegas. So I came to Vegas in 81 after touring around the country in 1972. Wow. Nine years touring around the country and the world. Right. Wow. Yeah. A lot of shows. A lot of shows. I had, like how many nights a week was I, uh, My average gig was six nights a week. When I did Wild in New Jersey, it was um, it was 95 days in a row. Wow. We never took a day off, two shows. It was really drooling, but when you're 20 years drooling. old. Drooling. Drooling. Both. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> it was drooling. In fact, I went on a sand dune ride uh, in Dubai last week, and it was uh -huh. very scary, and I said I was sand dooming. And somebody said, no, you mean dooming. I said, no, I was scared. It was dooming. <laughs> so that's like President Bush. You yeah. create these words. Yeah. That everybody knew what they meant, but nobody heard about it. Which Bush would that be now? we got three Bushes going oh, on. Oh, yeah, that's true. That would be number two. Number two. Number two. Are we going to have a number three? No, who knows? Yeah. So, uh, Tony, we, the way we usually start these is, what are your Italian roots? Um, my grandfather, on both sides, and grandmothers on both sides all came from Sicily. Okay. So I'm a true Sicilian. Although growing up as an Italian American no, I, I think I'm an American American now. I think let me see. No. My grandfather was an Italian Italian. Yeah. My father was an Italian American. So your father's born here? Yes. Okay. And I'm born here. Okay, so, so am I an American American? No, I, I don't think so. I think, see, when you told that to me the first yes. time, it had to do with knowing your culture, right? Your roots, you know, being feeling that you're Italian, knowing about Italian, right? Not just your genetics. So I'm Italian American. But now, where's your mother? She's Italian American. She's Italian. But her, both her parents are Italian. Yes. So if we did a genetic thing, a DNA. Your, all of your grandparents were Italian. Sicilian. Sicilian, sorry. And all of your parents are Sicilian. Sicilian. You know the Sicilians? That's where it started in Sicily. You know what I mean? So, all of your ancestors, as far as you know, are Sicilian. Right. Okay. So, on your basic thing, if it was genetics, you'd still be Italian. Sicilian. I'm sorry. Sicilian. And see, I get used to it for club. When I go around and I say, are you Italian or Sicilian? Some people get offended. I just recently heard that Sicily really would like to be a separate uh, island on its own as Sicilians. Sicily. Oh, okay. I just heard that from Anthony. I don't know. I was in Europe. I might have, I don't know. I just came back from Europe, so I don't know where I heard. It. Huh. Well, Anthony is uh, royalty, right? He's a duke. Yes. Amazon. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The owner of the giant feast. But to be perfectly clear, most people say perfectly honest. Yeah. You're all this size. So yeah. that's to be yeah. perfectly clear. Yeah, the only people who say honest that implies they're not always right. honest. Right. I know people yeah. say, Can I be perfectly honest? Well, what do you know? <laughs> dishonest? So I say, Can I be perfectly clear? Yeah. I really feel like I am an Italian American because I grew up with the culture of my grandparents and my mother and father. And as I travel around the world and meet different ethnic groups, I realize that what the true Italian values are is close-knit family. Uh, we look after each other, even though we argue all the time amongst the, the Italian family. We live the culture of the Italians, the food, the pastas, the birthdays, the celebrations. So in my heart, I'm an Italian American. And that's when you first explained it to me, that's what I thought you were referring to, yeah. is how yeah. you, the cultural thing. Yeah, my kids, if I had any, and I don't know if I do because I was on the road for a long time, they would probably be an American American because we're not really teaching the Italian way in America, which is okay. As we go on, when I visited Dubai just recently, I see the culture, how they developed from where they were 
thousands of years ago to where they are now. So what a learning experience. And I was in Paris, and I've been to Thailand, I've been to Tahiti, I've been to Beijing. This is just Shanghai. the last two weeks. Well, no, the last oh. three, the last two weeks it was Paris and Dubai. Okay. But last year was Venice, Bologna, and Florence. The year before that was Beijing, Shanghai, with Tahiti thrown in the middle there. And then before that was Thailand. And then before that So was, your passport is full. My passport, in fact, i got to get it uh, renewed. It's full. Wow, that's great. Anyway, so but I'm glad now, to be what here. What did your dad do? My father was a butcher. Butcher. Yeah, I'm a son of a butcher. Do? My grandfather was a mason. Okay. My grandfather's a mason and a, a number writer in the streets of Philly. When you were Italian in the early 50s and 60s, it was all right, you know, early yeah. numbers. And so my oh. grandfather and my father were both number writers, street number right. writers. Huh. It was a way of life. I don't think it's like that now because, because of the, the internet. Because of the legalized uh, okay. lotteries. Oh yeah, well, sure. But I, but I grew up a true Italian American, in an Italian family neighborhood in South Philadelphia, in which I still own my home in South Philly. So was uh, Sunday dinners the family? All the time. That's just part of life. The greatest thing in the world was I was performing at a young age, and my father used to make the spaghetti sauce while I was in bed at 11 o'clock in the morning, smelling the sauce and the meatballs and the gravy, that sauce, the gravy. It was unbelievable. I think about it right now, how simple life was being in the house with my father and mother, and my father was a hard worker. So I never had to worry about paying the rent or the electricity because my father was a very responsible an Italian American who took care of his family like most yeah. Italian families do. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm okay. proud to be an Italian. So at 11 o'clock, you'd wake up to the smell of, of gravy. Yes. And, and then I down. My mother always had like two or three meatballs, which I don't eat anymore, but two or three meatballs before she puts them in the sauce, just as a little appetizer. Ah. Okay. So we had that going. But my father, this is like around noon, one o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, my father was the butcher, but on Sundays, he was cooking the deal. So we would base the sauce with the pork yeah. and the chenevile and um, the beef bones. I mean, my father made a great Italian sauce. I can imagine. Yeah. Now, what places do you like in Las Vegas to go if you're not cooking? <laughs> well, now that my recent wife is a international executive chef, it's very difficult for me to go out when we're spending top dollar for which she cooks for me at home. Right. Because she is an international acclaimed chef, and what she prepares is as good as any meal that I get in any hotel. She's got the secret of cooking. So let's say you have some friends come into town, and yeah. you don't want to have your wife cook for you. She doesn't want to cook for you. What Italian restaurants you? Have? You know, I, I'm going to answer that question, but I got to tell you, Joe, that's passion is cooking. So when French she doesn't town, look she at says, it, says, I'm cooking. Okay. She doesn't look at it as a chore. Like, I'm a performer, entertainer, and singer. I don't look at it as a chore, but I look at it as a very wonderful and refreshing thing to do is entertain people. A lot of people get nervous when you get on stage. Stage has nothing to do with being an entertainer and performer. It's a comfort zone, whether you're a doctor testing patients or you're a, a comedian making people laugh. I'm on stage singing. So I look at that as joy. I don't look at it as, oh, I'm afraid, I'm a struggle, are people are going to like me. I don't look at that anymore. Now, was that always the case? Like when you were three, four? When did you start? I guess I started being an entertainer when I was born an identical twin because people kept looking at me all my life when you're identical twin from one, two, three. But my official stage recognition started about 10. And my first paying job, I was 12 years old. So from 12 till today, I'm still making money in his entertainer. I was making $5 at 12 years old when I was 12. I'm not making too $5 much. $5 a what? For one show. Oh, okay, not $5 a week. No, $5 for a show. Okay. I'm not making too much more today. <laughs> um, but to answer your question, you know, I, I like Sienna Tell. You know, I know John uh, okay. Carlos that yeah. owns it. Of course, Ferraro's is a top restaurant, a little pricey, but you know, you get the service, you get the food, you get the atmosphere. So you pay for atmosphere, you pay for things like that that you don't get at home. Uh, Valentine's Day, people said, what did you do? I said, I had a personal chef cook for me. 
for Valentine's what Day. What could be better? And she did. She cooked a great meal. She makes a great salt on the bean. And I used to go to her restaurant, and my Merrick's Express bill was like four or five hundred a month going to her restaurant. So she's feeding me the same stuff in my house. It's not costing me a dime. And this is French food or what? Primarily? It's French food, but you know, people think of French food as butter. Butter and not all of it. And because she's with me right now, she has think her thinking is different about butter and olive oil. But you know, she makes me a great fish, salon and bean. She'll make a great salmon. I don't eat the meat, but she makes her like bistro steak. She makes a couscous out of bulgur. Of course, she has her own pate company named Normandy Pate, but. Uh, it's not really buttery the way she prepares food for me. It's veg, fresh vegetables, fresh food, and everything that she prepares is fresh. Well, for being 45, you look great. Thank you. So you soon. learned to be a hard worker. I learned to be a worker like my father was a butcher. Okay. Yeah. Came to town, didn't know anyone. See Peter Warren writing me here. We started knocking on doors, my twin brother and I. And we got our first gig at the MGM Grand. And it lasted three years. Wow. And then I started this doing like television. every night? Yeah, it was, lounge or yeah what? six nights a week. Wow. We would perform six nights a week. Like two shows? Actually, you know, the Desert Inn was two shows. The Hilton was two shows. The MGM Grand was a little grueling. It's a little more than that. We were doing sets, which I was never doing. I did oh. shows. We did sets at the, right over there, right in the casino area, which was my first introduction to Vegas, which I loved. Uh, but I don't perform six nights a week right now. I prefer not to. I could if that was my yeah. only goal in life now, but I'm producing television, producing other people's televisions. I'm doing a lot of different things, so I like making appearances. I just did the San Gennaro Feast five nights. I did the Smith Center. I did the Italian Martin Club. What about the place down on, was, uh, that I saw you at, the... Uh, Smith Center? No, the guy down the street at the... Um, you have the, the TV show going on, the acts. Oh, yeah, the Boulder Station. No. This is about two miles that way. Oh, Las Vegas the, Boulevard. When I had the cafe, Las Vegas Rocks Cafe, when I owned that? No, no, this is a month ago. Mm. Last time I saw you. Before it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just did that Sunday. I'll be doing it again Sunday. Okay, it's Ron the Cars Event Center. Oh, yeah. I'm producing a weekly show there, which I really enjoy doing, featuring Las Vegas talent. Yeah. So it was very good, get comfortable. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, it's one thing about Ed when he says I'm doing something, he'll be there. His word is his bond. Well, you know, I was thinking because most people, you know, Las Vegas is good at this, but I was thinking, okay, I'm here a little bit early because I only walk, you know, two blocks. I'm thinking, um, what time will Tony be here? 12:32, 12:33. I thought, well, you know, this guy's an entertainer, and you're used to when the show starts at whatever time it starts, right? It starts. And you came in like eight minutes early. Yeah. And then we had to figure out how to park. I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't like being late at all. Do not like being late to go. Was that when you were growing up? Was that a thing? No. I, I think when you're growing up, I think you think it's cool to okay. be a little tardy, especially when you're a young entertainer and you're thinking that you're like it. Yeah. People will wait. Yeah. You know. Of course, we grow up, and now we realize responsibility, being on time, your word. It's the only thing we have in life is what comes out of our mouth. And that you learned from your parents. I learned that from my father and mother, yes. They, my father was a great, great guy. Uh, I have a book out called uh, Tony South. Oh, I should have brought the book. Yeah. Ambassador. You could go on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble. And it talks about my father. It talks about my father. Um, how he was rough. We are real. Yeah, rough. Right. So, it's, just, it's on. It's, it's on. Hello, world. <laughs> I hope you're watching this. Go to my website, TonySaka.com, or Tony at TonySaka.com. If you want to talk to me, uh, the great values of Italian Americans coming over from Italy, Italian Italians, where they realize that if you want to make a good life, hard work. My father yeah. always believed in work, 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 work. Although I think if you want to get rich, you don't work for a living. But because another, what? You don't work for a living if you want to get rich. Oh, what do you, you do? Know? Well, you don't put eight hours in a day. Oh, I see. You put 24-7, seven days a week, and you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. 
Now, work to me is working out. Working out. I get up in the morning, it's 6 o'clock, and I go, i got to go work out. That, to me, is work. Yeah, you don't, Every, because you don't look forward to it. I know you have to do it. I have to do it. Yeah. You know, exercise is not an option after 30. Right. Yeah. It's a requirement. Yes. Okay, so I know we're rushed for time. Go ahead. The, um, Las Vegas, compared to other cities as an entertainer, how do you rank it? It's much more difficult in Las Vegas because of competition, because of a different variety of uh, entertainment happening here. When you go to a small town, you're the, you're, you're the biggest fishing town. Every time I toured around the country, I was in Altoona, Pennsylvania, Springfield, Illinois. You're, you're in a small town, and people, you're the headliner. But in Vegas, you're not the headliner. You're part of a group of entertainers. So in order to really succeed this time, you got to kind of stick out some of So the, the headliners here are people who really come in from other places or what? Yeah, headliners like Shania Twain and Celine Dion, these people have international recognition. They're in a different element than a performer like myself who hasn't had a hit record. Ever? No. Just a lot of... I've had records. I've never had a hit record. Because you don't write music or what? Oh, I do write music. Well, you do. You know, I write my theme songs on my TV shows. I write jingles for people. I've written... Did you write the theme song for Las Vegas? Yes. Actually, we have a trailer on here yeah. of Oscar Goodman. Yeah, Talking. I wrote that. Okay. Yeah. I wrote and that. you produce that whole Yes, I'm thing. a writer, yeah. I write jingles and yeah, I write a lot of music, produce a lot of shows. I mean, aside from performing, which I love, the tushing is another element uh, of what I do. So I don't have to depend on anybody but myself. I produce all my own shows. I produce other people's shows. I got a good feeling on how to produce them. I, you know, you helped me tremendously getting this set up. Well, because I do about two or three of these interviews a week. Yeah. And it's always the same. I'm not sure where to do the lighting. Right. Well, now you know that the light <laughs> always has to be in front of you. See how nice we're lit up? Yeah, nice? yeah, we were. You know? I, I think for everyone else, we are. So, now usually the last question I ask, I'm not going to ask until I, ask, I say to you, well, what, is there anything that you'd like to say to the world? To the world. Anything that I didn't cover that you wanted to cover? Uh, I'd like to say to the world that sometimes in life we try to impress people, but I think in order to impress somebody, you must inspire them, enlighten them, then you can impress them. I think you need those three elements. Some people want to just impress. You no, know, you right. need to inspire enlighten and you will impress them. You know, um, we talked about you coming to the school to talk to the students and that's the kind of thing that you know, they need to get. Yeah. So I'll, we'll, Anytime. we'll try Anytime. to get you to come by later for that. Anytime. Now the last question I asked, you sort of already answered, but we ask everybody. Sauce or gravy? Um, at the uh, age that I am right now, I, I refer to sauce. When I talk about my past, I refer to gravy. And what is your wife? She, she's French. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's sauce, sauce but her. she wouldn't she ever call gravy. it gravy. No, she won't. Only Italian, Italians, Italian Americans know what gravy Especially is. Especially from the East Coast. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's sauce now, but gravy before. And you're younger. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. I love a good gravy. But the sauce is delicious. Thank you, Tony. Okay, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. I learned a lot, as always. <laughs> oh, this is mine.